Once I knew I would be going to the Lee Su Bible Institute in Thailand to teach, now I know it's up to four and a half months, I wanted to be familiar with the language. Not that I'd be able to speak it, of course, but at least be able to recognize it, know a few words. The difficulty is that there's only a million Lisu worldwide. So there are no resources online, digital ones, in which to learn the language because there's so few who speak it. It's obviously not economically feasible to create Lisu lessons. Now, my last posting on this website, on my blog, I wrote how Lucy invited me to Springfield, Illinois, and gave me a day of Lisu lessons. I recorded her pronunciation. Now, before going, I knew I had to have a way to easily retrieve the words and phrases that she spoke. I just couldn't arbitrarily fast forward on these t- on these recordings and try to find what I wanted to listen to. It just wasn't possible. So what I did was create a spreadsheet. Here it is here. There are four separate tabs in the spreadsheet. One is just pronunciation, which essentially is the alphabet. Then I had individual words. Here, as you can see, just words, whatever they may be. I tried to group them in categories. Phrases. You can see them right here. Not very many. A few phrases. And then biblical words. I tried to find the 100 most used, most common biblical words, particularly in the New Testament. Let's look at the alphabet. As you look at the alphabet, you can tell it's a Latin alphabet, except for some odd-looking characters, such as this upside-down P, this upside-down T, upside-down K, this backward C, and there are other letters like that. And why are these like this? Lisu has 30 consonant sounds. In order to accommodate these sounds, the missionaries inverted various characters to represent those sounds. This is true for the consonants as well as the vowels because Lisu has 10 vowel sounds. Let's just play a couple of the consonants. Let's do the B. Ba. What I did when I returned was to take my recordings. Lucy would pronounce the English and then after it the Lisu. And I was able to extract the Lisu sound and attach it so that when I would click one of these numbers, the Lisu sound would play as you hear here. Ba. Da. Da, ta. Let's move down to some vowels. Now you'll notice with the vowels, there are punctuation marks after six of these seven sounds. The reason for that is that these punctuation marks indicate a tonal value. Let me illustrate. This is the mid-tone value of the letter A that would be like our A ah in English. Ah. The single dot is a high tone. Uh. The comma is a rising tone. Uh. The double dot is a level tone very similar to the mid tone. Uh. The dot and comma, the vowel is slightly held longer. Uh. The semicolon is a glottal stop. Uh. And the colon is a low tone. Uh. Let's look at the words. I'll play just a few. No. And we'll come down here and grab a cup of his house. He. Ta. Lo. Let's move to some phrases. We'll come down here to my name is. Let's go, I am fine. And now, biblical words. You notice my columns, English, Li Su. Lucy also wrote out the words for me, so I was able to type them directly into here, having found a Lisu alphabet online that I could use. And then to the right, you see how I've tried to move these into an English equivalent. 
And what I did is you'll notice that whenever I have a backward letter like this, I put an underscore to represent it. Like you see this E underscore, this upside down A, the underscore. Here's the upside down backward L right here. And what this enables me to do is to search when I want to study a particular sound. For instance, let's say I want to I want to study uh, one of the vowel sounds I'm having trouble with, which is the upside down U. So I'm going to hit Control F for the find. I'll type the letter U with an underscore that finds the upside down U in any place it occurs here. So I'll find all like this. And now I can actually go and hear this word again, and by hearing it, be able to get a better handle on how to pronounce it. Let's take the first one right here. You can, it's, it's going to be the second syllable. Did you hear that? Do it again. Now let's move down to another one. Let's try this one right here, which is the word lawyer. It's like a uh sound. Let's go one more. Land. This way I can practice certain sounds that I have trouble. I can't remember when I see them. Or I just want to practice that particular sound more often within a context. I can do that. My goal has been to try to study Lisu every day. And it has not been successful. But yet that continues to be my goal. And then what I can do is, particularly with the biblical words, I can find two or three words. Find a Bible verse that has those words in it, such as a little while ago I used the word Jesus and the word preach. And by going to Bible verses that had those two words in it, I was able to isolate other words that I did not know. Now, I know that can be risky, but yet it's at least a step and a way of being able to learn more words. Even though I may be slightly off, they'll be easy to correct when I get there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and seeing how I'm trying to work with the language because when I go there, I want to be able to learn as soon as possible. Of course, I won't be able to do that the first year. That takes much longer than four and a half months to learn a language. But as I return, as I come back, as I practice, I hope to be able to come to the point where hopefully by next year, I will not need a, an interpreter for very long in the classes. I hope you enjoyed this. You have a great day.